Elephants Daniel Lukoya. Warmly welcome to this Saji Scriptures Sunday School. God bless you in the mighty name of the Lord Christ. Bow down your heads and let us pray. Father, we thank you for the power in the blood of Jesus. Father, we thank you for the salvation you have given to our body, soul, and spirit. Father, thank you for your power upon our lives. And thank you for your protection. We give you all the glory in the name of Jesus. Thank you because you have always been our nail in the sure place. You have always been our rock. Accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. Today in the side scriptures on the school, open our understanding and visit us. Lay your hands upon us by fire, by power, in the mighty name of Jesus. Anoint us by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you in Jesus' name. You must have been hearing announcements about the communion service taking place at the last Sunday of this month. It's important that we teach on this so you understand the implication and you understand the secrets and the mystery of the Holy Communion. So we're teaching on the Holy Communion. The Holy Communion is so divine and comfortable to them who receive it worthily. The Holy Communion is also dangerous to those who will presume to receive it unworthily. It is important to exhort you in good time to consider the dignity of this holy mystery and this great peril of receiving it unworthily. This will enable you to search and examine your conscience so that you may come holy and clean to such heavenly feast in the marriage garment required by the Holy Scriptures. And be received as worthy partakers of the Holy Table. We're reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 11 from verse 23. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. This do in remembrance of me. Jesus asked us to do this in remembrance of him. In Matthew chapter 26, Matthew chapter 26, from 26 to 29, Matthew 26, from 26 to 29. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it, and break it, and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup, and gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. 
there is still a marriage supper of the Lamb coming. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 16, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 16, the cup of blessing which we bless. Is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break. Is it not the communion of the body of Christ? So the bread is the communion of the body of Christ. The cup of blessing is the communion of the blood of Christ. And in Acts of Apostles, chapter 2, verse 42. Acts of Apostles, chapter 2, verse 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. So this was a regular thing during the time of the apostles. So the Holy Communion is the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In Mark chapter 14, verse 22. Mark chapter 14, verse 22. Mark 14, 22. And as they did eat, Jesus took bread and blessed, and break it and gave to them, and said, Take it, this is my body. And he took the cup, when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said unto them, This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. Verily I say unto you, I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung an hymn, they went out unto the Mount of Olives. Luke chapter 22 from verse 17. Luke 22 from verse 17. Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 22, verse 17. And he took the cup and gave thanks, and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it, and gave unto them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Beloved, the only communion is a means of grace. It is an opportunity to worship the Lord Jesus Christ by remembering what he did for us at Calvary and the garden tomb. It is a time to rehearse the message of the gospel in the ears of those who may not know it. The time for Holy Communion is a time to reflect upon our work with Jesus as individuals, whether we are working right or we are working wrong. It is a time to call to mind the great sacrifice and victorious resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is a time to remember his once and for all sacrifice as written in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 10. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 10. By the wish Will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all? Once and for all. Jesus left heaven to be born in a human body. Like an elephant demoting itself to become an ant. Jesus became poor that we may be rich. 
Jesus became our sins in his own body on the tree. Jesus willingly took our place on Calvary. Jesus shed his blood for our redemption. Jesus conquered death for us forever. Jesus ascended back to heaven to finish his redemptive work and to serve as our high priest forever. The communion is a time to contemplate what this sacrifice means to us as individuals. It's a time to publicly identify ourselves with Jesus Christ. The communion is a declaration of his death and resurrection to a new generation of people. It is a time of education as well as a time of worship. It's a time to share up our thoughts concerning the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is a time of reflection and also self-examination. Any believer avoiding the communion should really pray hard and make his or her way right. Right from the Old Testament, the communion has been existing. The Passover feast, the table of shoe bread in the tabernacle, these were all types of the communion. It is by faith the flesh and blood of Jesus given for the believer for the remission of sin is taken in the communion. The communion is not a symbol, but the actual flesh and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ after we have prayed. And it will be done in a worthy manner. It is an opportunity for you to become a witch or a wizard for Jesus. John 6.56 It's a secret event. It's a celebration of our freedom from the devil, from slavery, from oppression, and from death. It's a feast of linking the union of believers with the Savior. It is a personal fellowship with Christ. It is one of the vital ministries of the New Testament. The communion creates unity because partaking of one bread creates fellowship between members and merges them into one body, the Church of God. The communion reminds us of the heavenly meals awaiting us in heaven. Matthew 26:29. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine, until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. The communion is a final blow to Satan and his agents. Revelation chapter 12 verse 11. Revelation 12 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives unto the death. Remember the Old Testament. Moses did nine miracles without Pharaoh giving up. But the blood of the Passover lamb forced Pharaoh to release Israel speedily. So it is more than a religious tradition. It is a gateway into the presence of God. It's a place of poison. It is the time body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ symbolized by bread and wine to eat and to drink because something available to us spiritually. The communion is the last will and testament of the Lord Jesus Christ. The communion gives strength. If you partake in the communion, this is what happens. It gives strength. It gives unusual strength to face life challenges. 
Jesus, before going to Calvary, took the communion. He received the heavenly strength from the meal. Elijah had communion and trekked and fasted for 40 days and nights. The communion ensures continuous sustenance of life. It ensures continuous sustenance of life. The communion gives sound health. The communion blesses. In fact, Paul calls it a taste of blessing. In 1 Corinthians 10.16, He says, the cup of blessing we should bless. Is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread we should break. Is it not the communion of the body of Christ? And in John 6.51, John chapter 6 verse 51, the Bible says, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh. And I will give you the life of the world. The communion gives great and abundant life. It ensures there is no loss, no death, no tragedy, no waste. Since life is in the blood, by taking the communion, you inject the very life of Jesus into your being. The communion connects us with eternal life. In John chapter 6, verse 53 to 54. John chapter 6, verse 53 to 54. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whosoever eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. The communion opens our eyes to the spiritual and physical things. Whether you're a business or a student, it opens your eyes. It allows you to have clarity of vision and use divine vision. The communion gives long life. In 1 Corinthians 11, verse 29 to 30. 1 Corinthians 11, 29 to 30. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the lost body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Whatever cannot be found in the blood of Jesus cannot be found in your blood if you take the communion. The communion has the power to kill all kinds of blood diseases. This is a very, very powerful thing. After the Passover of the Israelites, the Bible says there was none feeble, none sick, no disease, no plague. The communion washes sins away. The intake of the blood regularly kills sinful nature and habits you are unwilling to change. The communion gives rest. You receive rest in every area of your life. The Israelites took communion and regained their freedom. The communion provokes judgment on your enemies. Your enemies will lose something priceless and will be forced to let you go. What mankind lost through a snack, 
God resources through a meal, the communion meal. To conclude this teaching, the Holy Communion is a Christian ceremony in which bread is eaten, the fruit of the vine is drunk as a way of showing devotion to Christ Jesus. The Communion is the Lord's Supper. The Holy Communion is a spiritual immunization that we need to partake in as often as possible. We need to partake in it in remembrance of the Lord according to 1 Corinthians 11.25. The Holy Communion is a gateway into the presence of God. The Holy Communion was instituted by the Lord Jesus Christ and it is taken to remember what Jesus did to us at the cross. He purchased for us salvation. Meaning we have been delivered, healed and saved from the powers of darkness. The Holy Communion is a fellowship of believers by which they gather together to remember the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. We we'll continue this teaching next time. Remember, the purpose of this teaching is to explain to you the importance of the Holy Communion, the reverence we should pay to it, the seriousness we should give to it, and the fact that we should examine ourselves thoroughly before taking the Holy Communion. We should cleanse our lives, decongest our lives, be sanctified, be holy, as we partake in the communion. And we should also realize that it is dangerous to take the communion unworthily with things in your heart that you ought to have dispatched from your heart. With habits you ought to have dispatched from your spirit. God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Bow down your heads and let us pray. Father, we thank you because the entrance of your word bringeth light. Father, as many as have listened to this teaching, open their understanding. Let us be worthy in your sight. Lay your hands upon our lives. We bind and cast out every spirit of death and hell. Lay your hands upon your people mightily. To you, Father, be the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you in Jesus' name. Continue to join the rest of the service.